this video is based on the Lindsay Parton and Hannah Wache case, the babysitter who got convicted of other things, I'll tell you guys. But I say I'm going to go live April 28th, 2023 at 8 o'clock, but I have to push the time back to May 6th. That's a Saturday at 8 o'clock. So hopefully you guys join us live to watch the interrogation. There's also another part of the case that I need to add. I found more information that's related to this case. So hopefully you guys join us. What's going on, y'all? I'm back with another one. Okay, so the suitcase case keeps getting pushed back. That's why y'all have not seen me. I've been literally waiting for them to go to trial so we could do the live reaction, you know? But that's not happening because they keep pushing the trial back, which I told y'all on the last live they were going to do that. Into who? I have a case right now. I'm bringing my daughter in because, um... She has no idea what this is going to be about. She just knows that I want her to react live through my recording and hear it the first time with y'all. It's about a nightmare, lying ass, bitch ass babysitter, okay? Y'all going to get the whole rundown. I believe Friday next week, I'm going to go live and we're going to watch the interrogation together and I react live for y'all. I'm more than likely going to do it at 8 o'clock Eastern uh, Pacific Time. So, I hope that y'all can join us. Anyway, we about to get started on this. I told y'all I was going to have a guest. This is my daughter, Tati. Y'all should remember her. We reacted to a Steve Wilco's video. So, y'all should remember her. And she did a story time telling y'all about her. So, um, hopefully y'all remember. All right. She she has no idea. I mean nothing. I want her to give y'all her reaction while I tell y'all what this interrogation going to be about next week. You know what I'm saying? I'm you, you really should be. You honestly really should be. So this case is going to be, I'm going to name it the nightmare bitch ass lying ass babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, pause. Oh, wait a now this bitch, you just wait to this bitch. I swear to God, y'all. I put this on my my father's grave. She has no idea what this is about. Like she didn't hear nothing. I gave her nothing. The only thing I told her was it has something to do with child abuse. That's literally it. You ready, Tati? Are you ready? No. <laughs> well, you should get ready real fast. All right, the bitch's name is Lindsay uh, Parton. She was 35 when all this happened. This was the babysitter. This took place in Butler County, Ohio. Now, the little town, was, it's a little town. You know what I mean? Like, nothing barely really happens there, especially something as deep as this. The victim's name is Hannah Wache. I think I'm saying her name right. She was three. And yes, I used the word was. She was three. The victim father's name was Jason Wache. You said was? You said the victim's father's name Oh, the was. victim father's name is. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, my bad. It is Jason Wache. Now, this happened March 8th, 2018 at 7.01. Lindsay little bitch ass calls Jason. He just dropped his daughter off. He left literally not even a... Full three minutes went by. He was down the road. He he didn't even leave the street yet, okay? Lindsay's ass is calling him back. Like, oh my God, Hannah, she just passed out and I can't wake her. Should I call the ambulance? Yeah, yeah. The mad thing, mad thing, is it? Right. Okay, if one was one, it was two. Then look. In her situation, in her situation, it equals six. It doesn't... Because two plus two plus four. Yeah, yeah. but it's six for her. Okay. Yes. Yeah. When he gets there, her goofy ass is on the phone with the paramedics, and she's like, yeah, she just fell out. I don't know what happened. You can hear Jason in the background trying to wake his daughter up. Hannah, look at me. Look at me. She's unresponsive. Lindsay's dumbass 
tells the operator, yeah, she just fell out. I don't know what happened. Her father literally just dropped her off. So I don't know what could have happened that fast. She just passed out as soon as he left. Make it make sense. If the dad is dropping a baby off and she's perfectly fine and then she get there and all of a sudden she fell out less than three minutes later. And I'm, I'm, I'm not exaggerating times here. I'm giving you facts. Less than three minutes later, that baby done fell out. The dad didn't even leave the road yet. The paramedics, they get there 15 minutes later. They took Hannah to Fort Hamilton Hospital, but that's not a children's hospital. You know, they tried to stabilize her real fast. And then they uh, transported her to Cincinnati's Children's Hospital in critical condition. In fucking critical condition. That's under a half an hour. The baby's in critical condition when she's leaving Fort Goddamn Hamilton Hospital. She gets to uh, Cincinnati Children's Hospital in critical condition. Does it not sound fucking nuts? I'm so, I'm so, I'm about to give you and y'all. Are we gonna watch it? Like, I'm, I'm going to literally show y'all the interrogation at eight o'clock. At eight o'clock. I want people to be able to see this video so they know to be prepared to come and actually watch the interrogation and all of that. It's going to blow you. Like the interrogation literally fucking blew my mind. I normally don't watch it ahead of time. I had to watch this one. And I swear to God, I was literally yelling at my TV. When I say I was yelling, baby. Yeah. But I'm about to read off this baby's injuries. You understand me? You ready? No. Get ready real quick. Cause baby. I literally had to write them all down. Ready? Severe brain bleed. Bruises on her shoulders and neck. A black eye. Small bruises across her chest. Various scratches and bruises over her body. Swelling in her brain. Swollen bruise on the back side of her head. A scrape on her chin. Consistent with abuse and Hannah being shaken. Hannah was shaking someone shook that baby now if this happened in under three minutes she couldn't do all of that in those three minutes feel what i'm saying she, but she could have shaken that baby under those three minutes but those are probably the previous exactly injuries that she probably caused and the brain was like the final straw type thing because exactly was, we about to get get girl Ooh, I was so mad. I'm still mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. I honest to God was really, really mad when I found this case. But it made me want to record immediately. Right. Lindsay, she has a husband. Why? <laughs> I hate you. Her husband's name was Timothy Smith. They called him TJ. TJ's dad owns a construction company called Smith Corp Construction that TJ basically managed. So in June 2017, Jason was hired by TJ as a mechanic. This, this is actually sad. He needed a job. Hannah's mom wasn't really in the picture. She was on drugs, you know. Hannah was born an addict. Uh, the doctors basically treated her over the course of three months to wean her off of drugs. And the NICU, the, the pictures of her was like, wow. Like, you could see her shaking. She was so small. She was so small. She was a preemie? Yeah. But she needed a round-the-clock care, though. And that NICU, she was literally being monitored 24-7. Nurses had to be near her. That's how addicted she was. That's how much drugs her mother used while she was pregnant. But they weaned her off. She got to a healthy weight. She was able to go home. Obviously, she starts growing into a little energetic bundle of joy. I don't understand how this baby was as happy as she was because this story goes a little deeper. Two years, Jason and Hannah was homeless. Jason would sleep in his car and Jason's brother would allow Hannah to sleep in the house at night. So he was sleeping in a car and she would sleep in the house, but he would have his daughter during the day. I want to understand though, why was she allowed to stay? That honest to God was my question, but I couldn't ask it. Because that was my question, because I was like, 
Because when you said it, I was like, okay, but well, why is the dad, okay, so if that's the dad's brother, why are you having your brother sleep in the car, but he's Dora sleeping in the car? That's getting very much suspicious to me. Me too. It took me It took me to my childhood, to be honest with you. It took me to the, why am I the only one allowed up in her? And then you got the creepy uncle climbing in the bed. That's on the cigar, what I thought instantly. No, because that, that was the first thing that popped in my head. Because it's like, why is the child sleeping in the, in the house, but like the daddy's outside in the car park? Yeah. But like, that's your brother though. But that's your brother though. Your so, brother. Right, so even if he sleeps in the couch, you know, he could have slept with his daughter is the point right. for me. Like, wherever that baby was sleeping, why the hell couldn't he like, sleep? Okay, because okay. if I because why do I feel like the next thing that's going to come out of your mouth is that... No. <laughs> but being honest, that baby was too young to really tell you if that did happen. Yeah, but like, when you when they do the autopsy, they could have also probably showed as well, depending on how deep they went into the autopsy. But that could, I feel like, I think that can also show the autopsy as well. Yeah, I don't think nobody is thinking about that because of how severe her injuries were. Her other injuries were, but it's like, but like if she was, that would have been my thought process. I wouldn't say check her everywhere. If something did happen, the brother probably got away with it because it's like, well, now the babysitter took the fall for even what she did and whatever I did, if I even did anything, then everybody's gonna ever know about it. Type of thing. I, I'm really not gonna hold you. I'm gonna really look into the brother's situation a little more. I want to see if he was married at the time. I want to see what his lifestyle was. I'm really giving all of that when we watch the interrogation together. I'm giving all that. I want to know too. It's very suspicious to me. Um, when he did start working with TJ, he needed a babysitter because he would work 12-hour days. Obviously, he need the rap money. He's homeless right now. He's living in a car. His daughter is sleeping in his brother's house. He needed a babysitter. He had nobody. TJ's wife was already watching one of her friend's kids and her two kids. So uh, TJ figured, okay, well, I'll ask Lindsay to watch your daughter, see how it goes. But I mean, that only really makes sense because she's already watching her friend's kids, plus her kid, and like the father and like her husband or whatever they work together so it's like you know he figured the same thing i would have thought like i would have said okay well if dante's here watching other kids what would be one more to you you feel what i'm saying right so i mean that would have been my thought process especially knowing his situation he's homeless he needs that money he needs that money more than anything was she also using the other kids including her kids or was she only abusing uh we're gonna get to it we're gonna get to it but by Lindsay already watching her friends kj figured she wouldn't mind so when he asked her she accepted but she said on a temporary basis so she watched hannah every day except for on fridays he had another babysitter for friday so a month after jason started working with tj a house literally 300 yards away went on the market a house went on the market and jason bought the house so now he's not homeless anymore but that makes him lindsay and tj's neighbor so once he bought the house he asked lindsay well can this become a permanent situation with you watching hannah and she agreed to it she said okay cool whatever that's one thing if you're already watching your kids right and your friend's kids and you feel like adding one more kid is going to be way too much for you why don't you just fucking say that like why are you gonna like why are you gonna be like okay i watch her and then it's like the ones that you've been watching plus yours because you still have to be a mother to your kids like you know first of all since she's not even watching her she's being a mother to her kids and babysitting her friend's kids plus one more kid so if that's too much for you that's the same thing I say. It makes no sense to me how you would accept anything that you can't handle. You know me? I got my kids, and if they a handful, and then you came to me like, Mom, can you keep a grandkid? And if I'm feeling like it's too much, I'm going to tell you I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? That's just weird to me. Don't accept some shit that you know you can't do. The thing is, right, if she accepted the first day, and she tried it out, and she's like, all right, so it's too much for me. That, you know, I get it, then she can talk to that, like, you know, I tried it out, you kind of thirst, but, you know, it's so And there was another babysitter. She went to a different babysitter. Like, both of them. 
Am I thinking a little too deep? Am I, am I, am I, am I, little, am I thinking, because I feel like. I, no, you're thinking how I thought. That's why I wanted you to, to react live. You're thinking how I thought. So, Lindsay, in a sense, became Hannah's second mom. Because, like I right. said, working long, long hours. So, she would feed her, get her dressed. You know what I'm saying? By the time he get home, at times, she already had dinner and she sleep. Oh, so, Lindsay also suffered a miscarriage okay. in February. So, she was still going through the, once again... You're still going through my emotions and everything. Why not? I'm still, it's a little too, can you find somebody? Like, I don't, okay. Exactly. So while she's been questioned, they asked her if Jason had a temper. She tried to speak it up like he did. Put us interrogation, bruh, it's going to be a what the fuck, okay? So when the detective says, you take a polygraph test, she immediately is like, nah, if my lawyer don't tell me to do it, I'm not doing it. But yet, she doesn't have a lawyer with her. While she's being questioned at this time, she's not under arrest. So she really could get up and leave when she wants to, type thing. She's still sitting there talking. The thing is, if you didn't do anything wrong, why not do the polygraph test? You know, this should have this brought my man Dan and I. Because, you know, if you watch the vocals, you know who Dan is. You yeah, fuck this yeah. Should, this should brought him out, like... We did do the, 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 the Steve Wilco's laughs. Stop playing. I'm saying like not you, but I'm saying like just like if they watch the book of this show, then in terms of they should just go ahead and put a problem on set because he be he be like, on it, and he he could talk your ass into taking it too. Exactly. But like also know that like if you feel like you didn't do nothing wrong, why do you need your lawyer to okay you to be a polygraph test? But see, that's what people don't realize. The lawyer will say that to you. They honestly, like, unless they have a gut feeling that you did something, they literally will say to you, and believe me, I know this firsthand, they will say to you, why not take the test if you didn't do anything? Especially, like, if they're familiar with those cops and everything, like, they will tell you, why not just do it? You know what I mean? Unless they're familiar with the cops and there's a problem, they will tell you not to take it then. So, like, the detectives are like, well, do you mind if we dump your phone? Meaning, they connect a cord to your phone, to their, their computer, and literally will take everything that was on your phone and it downloads to their computer. And it downloads to their system. So they could check shit you deleted. They could check what's in there in the moment. They could check all that, okay? They they could check your, your goddamn, your Googling, whatever you Googled previously. They asked her, this goofy bitch said yes. She could have just taken the polygraph test. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. I'm like, make it make sense. The math ain't mathing, baby. The math is not adding up because now it's like, if you were talking about it and you said planning, whoever you planning with, y'all going to jail. I'm like, jail. make it make sense. It, it's like, with the polygraph test, you someone can, can get late. Like, you someone can get away with it. Like if you're taking medication and stuff like that and like this test come out like the whatever Dan be saying, right? They, they they can just use the fact that you're taking medication as an excuse. But Yeah, see, that would be an issue with me. Like by me like having epilepsy and uh have blood pressure, they wouldn't be able to test me. So But let's say if it's one of y'all they'll be able to test y'all because y'all aren't on any medications that like See, my medication is to stop electrons from firing through my brain. Get what I'm saying? I won't react the same way y'all would react. Toast it, you. So like I said, they could they could check your timelines, everything. They could check it all. It ain't like the, they're dumping this shit on our computers. It's their computers. I understand? Their they shit. They can go back. From the moment you bought that phone, they could go back. She had asked if she could leave after they got done, but he ain't going nowhere. actually they were like, okay, fine. They stopped questioning her, but her husband announced to her, TJ is in a whole nother room being questioned at the same time. So she decided to stay and wait for him. Let me tell you what, that's deep in one minute. Hannah, she has an older sister named Caitlin. 
Caitlyn lives with her mother, their, their um, half-sisters, but they just have the same dad. Caitlyn would go over on weekends. They had asked if Hannah acts weird when she's about to go to the babysitters, and she said, well, she likes to go to the other babysitter more than she likes to go to Lindsay's. She said whenever uh, their dad would drop her off at Lindsay's, she would have a whole hissy fit. Even though um, that can mean two different things because Anna was really like daddy's girl. He loved her daddy. He had her literally since birth. So by him being the only parent to her, could be what it is. She she has um, anxiety or uh, what is that called? Um, detachment, attachment, like yeah, she's like attached. To Go ahead. What would what? But my thing is, though, right? She doesn't act or cry when she goes together with you. See, she only acts and cry when she goes. So if it was a thing where she was attached, she would have done it when she goes to the other babysitter as well. That's what I said. I just didn't want to jump the conclusions immediately. Oh wait a minute. I forgot the ad. While the detectives are questioning Lindsay, she changed her story seven exact number. Exact number, no exaggeration. She changed her story seven different times. We watched the interrogation. You could count them out yourself. You know what she reminds me of? That lady that put her husband in the suitcase. This look, this is what made me so excited about this case. I'm sad for this little girl. You get what I'm saying? This is something that people need to know. You know what I'm saying? Because people will literally just drop their kids off to anybody. It seemed my kids weren't going to people. Like, it was very rare for someone else to have my children. Okay? Yeah. So, the detectives add up to Hannah's granddad. His name is uh, David. David keeps Hannah every two weeks. Well, he kept Hannah every two weeks. They, they asked David, well, did you see any marks on her? And David says, yeah, I would see marks and bruises on her. And he said, well, did you ask questions? And he's like, of course I did. Why wouldn't I ask about my grandchild? Like, the weird part about it, he said he started seeing those marks on her about eight months ago. Now, eight months is how long Lindsay was watching that baby. So, okay, hold on. I'm not gonna mad. I'm kind of mad at the dad. I'm kind of upset with the dad a little bit. His because mind, I gotta explain the dad. I was mad too, so I went a little further. His mind, there's four kids over there playing. They they play rough. That's literally what came out of his face. They play rough, mm -hmm. and he knows how energetic his daughter is. So in his mind, these things are happening that way. But there's a situation that I'm about to tell you about where I got pissed off at him. Jason says Vivian, which is Lindsay's daughter, and Hannah basically were climbing on a crib. And supposedly, Hannah had fell in her chin. That's where the scrape That's where the chin. Where the scrape came from. I'll tell you how wild that is. He had asked Hannah, well, how did that happen? And she said, well, Lindsay hit me. But in his head, he twisted it because he's thinking, well, she knows she wasn't allowed to climb on a crib, so she lied to me because she didn't want to get in trouble for climbing on a crib. So he basically, like, you know, just brushed it to the side. That's what they always say to always believe the kids regardless if the story sounds crazy or not. Until you get to the bottom of it, always believe the kids. Like, I, like, I don't... But March 9th, 2018, the detectives went back to Lindsay's house, and they wanted her to come back to the station but she's like well i don't have anyone to watch my kids so i'll have to come later they're like no you're coming now to put your kids in the car and let's go <laughs> we're going with your kids exactly right. they really took the kids to the station too steve is there some snacks they get some pizza no let's go funny part is when they get her in that interrogation room baby she changed her story so many times about that chin, it's not even funny. Like I said, the story changed seven, seven. whole ass times. She said, the, the, the first one, I ain't going to go down all seven. I'm going down a couple. The first one was, uh, Hannah fell off this toy train. This toy train is like a little scooter. Like you sit on it and can push yourself on it. Supposedly she stood up on it and then she fell. And hit her chin. That's something she also said to Jason. That's how the chin happened.
she says, this one really motherfucking got me. Then she told, she told Jason, she fell off the train. That's how she got the black eye. It wasn't the chin this time. It was the fucking eye. Okay, so if, but like, how does, but it wouldn't give. She changed her story six more times after this. My still wouldn't add up. So the doctors are communicating with the detectives and they're like, nah, bruh, there's new and old bruises on this baby. There's new and old injuries on this baby. So it doesn't make sense. Her stories aren't adding up with what is happening with this baby so we need to get to the bottom of it that's what made it very clear this was abuse the doctor is told the detectives like nah bruh it couldn't have happened that way that chin ain't happened that way it didn't happen that way and then oh this one whoo baby all right so the the like i said the doc doctors are communicating with the detectives they telling the detectives everything okay so the detectives ask well how did her brain start swelling How's there a hemorrhage? And they're like, we need to know that. They're like, it makes no sense. Her story doesn't make sense. They also said, there's no possible way that the hemorrhaging and the swelling started before Lindsay got Hannah. Cause she tried, that was a, one, another one of her stories. She tried to say, oh, well, it had to have happened before she got to my house. No, because if it had happened before, then she would have been where ended up. No, then she, that would have happened. Like her passing out or something that would have happened in her dad's care. Only exactly. Dad her to the babysitter. The uh, doctors told the detectives there's no possible way that that happened in his care. It had to have happened literally right before she caught him. They said that the swelling and the hemorrhaging was happening so fast, it had to have literally been an immediate thing. So, another one of her stories. Eventually, Lindsay says, well, I smacked her. She said, I smacked Hannah in the back of her head. Did she, okay, did she, uh, like, did she, was she not... Was she absent doing science class or something? I think so. Because the, when they're not looking, she could have just, you know, slit or something. And it just sniffled a little. Then she says, well, th well, they ask, like, well, why would you do that? Then she, she goes to another story. Well, I basically hit Hannah because I caught her pouring ketchup in the toilet. And she knows better. So that's how her chin happened. So then she says, because the detective said that don't make sense. Well, I smacked her under her chin a couple times. But that still doesn't explain the cut that she got. Exactly. Scrape, though. It's a scrape. It's not a cut. It's a scrape, baby. Because if you had smacked her under the chin, like, it probably would be red or something. Or, like, a little, not even a little bruise. That depends on how hard you smack her. But why, is, why the fuck are you smacking a three-year-old? Why are you hitting a three? So the detectives, they're already annoyed with her, whatever. And they're trying to be nice, but they're pissed off. You could tell they're pissed off. I can't wait for y'all to see that. But, um, so she goes into the story about how she had a miscarriage. The detective says, well, how far along were you? And she goes, 14 weeks. So the detectives, they're, they're going, they went through her messages and shit. Like I said, they dumped her phone. Lindsay and TJ, they argued a lot over text message because he wasn't really home. Remember, he's working too. He's managing his dad's. So they're arguing a lot because he doesn't spend time with them and all of that. And she just had the miscarriage and you know. Right. I thought like she was really that miscarriage for everyone. Everyone, everyone, everyone. But guess what this, guess what this, guess what this when they are questioning her about this baby she showed no fucking remorse there wasn't a tear there wasn't a i feel bad there wasn't a a nothing there wasn't a fucking nothing she put on a quick little show for the miscarriage though she put a quick little show on for that but that was it 
She could have stayed crying. Like, oh, she like, did. No. For that miscarriage. Baby. She ain't doing it for the baby. She did it for her little fake miscarriage. You know what I'm saying? Like, she could have stayed crying for, like, for the baby at least, you know, you know, because they always give you water. So she could have just, like, you know. <laughs> So bad. The detectives asked Lindsay, why Hannah? Why did you do this to Hannah? And she says, well, she's the mischievous one. The other ones didn't do what she did. Why not tell her dad that she cannot watch her anymore so you can somebody else to watch her? Like I said, there was a babysitter number two. You think she was jealous? I do. No, because like really think about it. Because she babysat, she was missing her friends' kids too as well, which means that they're not her kids, whatever. But I'm pretty sure her friend's kid also jumped around and you know do this. So the, all the kids were around the same age. Now Hannah's so three, baby. So that's telling you if they're all around the same age, they're they're all those kids are goddamn mischievous. Exactly. Kids are very curious. Nobody tell me nothing different. I, I literally birthed four of them niggas. I know. Literally. You know Key and Trunk was literally around the same age. You know what I went through. Remember, Vivian was also climbing on that crib with Hannah. So how the fuck? But how the fuck is, is Hannah the only mischievous one if Vivian was also doing the same thing, baby? Child. Exactly. Make that make sense. But guess what? More text messages surfaced. Okay. More text messages between her and her husband about Jason. She basically complained about him being behind in payments. She also didn't really want him to become their neighbor because she feared him dropping the baby off on her whenever he wanted to. As if you couldn't say no, bitch. Girl, wait though. Mason was talking to the detectives about a time when Lindsay called and she was telling Jason how she had to take Hannah to urgent care. This was about four months into her watching Hannah. She needed to take Hannah to urgent care because she uh, supposedly fell and Hannah had two black eyes, a bump on her nose, and supposedly Lindsay took her to urgent care under her daughter's name so the insurance would cover it. The detectives checked. Her daughter's name was nowhere in urgent care in any hospitals or anything. So she lied. She never took um, Hannah. Yeah. But my thing, this is where I'm at at the daddy. Bitch, yes, your fucking daughter comes home with two black eyes and a bump on her nose, and you telling me that's not suspicious to you? How your baby got two black eyes, bitch? Like, come for real, for real. One, exactly. That's not questionable to you. It's just that she fell. And she never gave him no paperwork. She never gave him nothing. No evidence. That would have been real questionable. That's where I'm at at the daddy. Like, bitch, make it make sense. Okay. I, um, um, I now this happened in December. This this situation happened in December 2017. I'm still, okay. I'm still trying to process how exactly did she fall and end up with two black eyes because I am clumsy and I play in plenty of time and I have yet to get two black eyes. Girl, when Buddha was two, your dad was playing around with Buddha. We was coming out of the restaurant. He put Buddha on his shoulders, and it was real icy outside. And he was running to the car with Buddha on his shoulders because it was cold outside. And he wanted, I don't know, he was in a playful mood. Now, he fell with Buddha on his shoulders. When he fell, Buddha definitely hit his face on the ground. Buddha definitely had a black eye from it. But there wasn't no bump or nothing on his gut. A bump in the nose? Nigga, that says broken nose to me. But, like, to be fair, though, that situation is a little bit more understandable because he was running with him. It's not like he was walking with him and he just... Exactly. I mean, if he was walking with him and he ended up accidentally falling down his shoulder, he still would have, you know... Cause he, yeah, he, they, he they both fell this way. 
So I understood how Buddha got that black eye. What I don't understand is how this baby got a black, two black eyes. And she fell, but she got a bump right here. Did she run into her fist or something? I don't get it because I don't. But guess what this? Guess what this? So at the time of the questioning, though, this is the funny, 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 it, weird situation to me. Because at the time of the questioning, you know, March 8th and March 9th, Lindsay and TJ were separated. So what did she need to wait for him for when he was being questioned? When he, she asked to leave on the 8th. Remember? They weren't together. They weren't together. They weren't together. They weren't so even speaking. They weren't on speaking terms. So why would she ask to... You tell me. Because if you're trying to wait for somebody that you haven't spoken to, and you guys are not on speaking terms, and you're, de you're definitely asking them if it's niche. Because if he knows something, and you're not on speaking terms, he knows niche. Hold on. The offense uh, attorneys asked, for him to testify on her behalf, he fucking refused. She's not gonna be here. First of all, why would they? But look, Hannah passed away March 18th, 2018. That baby, 10 days in that hospital, fighting for her life. I think that is like, that's some foul, foul, foul shit. While this lady sitting in there being questioned and not a emotion, not not a nothing girl, not a nothing. This is the craziest part. You ready? When the detectives arrested Lindsay, this is what ha happened. She asked the detectives, "Was well, there a lot of people back there? Because I don't want to be embarrassed." She was more worried about being embarrassed. While this baby is. Being buried, this whole worrying about being embarrassed. She got nothing. She ain't got nothing to worry about because she went to jail. Oh, she, she got arrested. arrested. But her her question when she was being arrested and being booked, she asked if there was a lot of people in the back, in the holding cells and shit. So she's not embarrassed. That's you what you worried about. Or not, you're still gonna be embarrassed because gonna be on the news. The oh, she was on the news. Oh yes. Not unless you're embarrassed. And when you get in, and when you get to jail, they gonna fuck you up. The thing about, and that's what people don't even think about. The thing about child abusers and and shit like that, even murderers in jail, don't like that shit. Yup. When they find out what you done did to a kid, baby, you better watch yourself. They don't play them games. Like, they can do anything. They'll do any and everything in the book. They oh, and the guards will help. Believe me when I tell you, the guards absolutely will help. All about some child abuse? Oh, yes. I cannot wait for y'all to see the interrogation. Don't want to see it because I know for a fact it's going to be like, every other word that's going to come out of her mouth is going to be stupid. Because there is no way to, I'm still stuck at the fuck that this lady said. She fell and she got two black eyes. Nah, just wait till you, you literally sit there. I want, listen, I want y'all to count how many times this woman changed her story so y'all know I'm not exaggerating. It literally was seven fucking times. When the detectives found out that um, they weren't even on speaking terms at the time, they were blown. Because it's like, that. it don't make sense. What you waiting on him for? They didn't even know that they were separated. Oh my God, how did I forget? How did I forget? Listen, listen, listen though. Listen, Linda. They they, they were talking to um, other people and they were asking about her having a temper or whatever. Some of her like friends and family members were like, I can't imagine her doing this. Like, it makes no sense. If I had an opportunity to leave my kid with her right now, I would. I don't believe she did this yet. All the evidence pointed to this bitch and only this bitch. No one else but this bitch. You see, it's always the friend of family. And the person, there is family members and friends that goes over to the house because obviously she got kids, so they gotta go visit her. 
So I appreciate they saw the different, like the way that she was shooting. Of course, I'm not gonna say anything, but it's like, how are you gonna sit there? Like, she's three. She's you could even know somebody though. Exactly. And they could still hard. they could still do the same thing. There's some family members where you need to look sideways, like, hold up, what all I know about you? <laughs> especially no, because like, especially if they're having problems with the parents or like the mother specifically, they are going it's like why is the child kind of suffer because of her you notice some bruises and shit and come on, now the the two black eyes is where I got mad at the father. Like, this happened back in December of, of 2017. You noticed this. The math went and math them for me. When she fell, how oh, she fell? How the, she fell and got two black, two, two. So what did she do? Run into a pool? Even if she ran into a pool, she still wouldn't get two black eyes. And all the kids were around the same age. And if... If Vivian and Hannah were climbing on a crib together, baby, that tells me that Vivian was just as mischievous as Hannah was. Like, how you gonna say Hannah was the mischievous when the other kids weren't the same? It's that monkey see, monkey do. From the age of what, was one to probably like what, eight, seven? Girl, listen, listen. It's like that their whole life. You know Ken and Trump are literally, you know, they're a year apart. Now, you personally know them. You personally know the stories. You personally witness it. Tell me, even at their ages now, tell me they don't be mocking each other. And they're 13, 14. Come on, bruh. Like, come make it make sense make it make sense if those kids was around the same age they were all doing the same thing i guarantee you hannah wasn't the only one in that bathroom pouring that ketchup in that toilet listen whenever chunk was doing some shit he was doing it with him i swear to god i swear to god. she climbed on his back to open the fucking doors they outside in they diapers, butt booty hole ass naked with they bottles and binkies. Outside, together. It wasn't one of them. That lady was definitely lying. I birthed it for them niggas. And, and wait though, even with Buddha and Jayden being three years apart, Jayden and Trump being three years apart. It's the monkey see monkey do. Literally, Buddha is gonna be 21. Jayden's gonna be 18 and they still yes girl you know it you personally know it you've been a part of this damn family for what seven years stop playing you know it all you know it all you know it all so I know that lady was lying her ass off and it's like and the crazy thing is too like I got a whole I got like a whole guy child that has two brothers Mind you, they're like older than her. There's still monkey see monkey do. <laughs> yes. I'm in my late 30s, baby. You in your early 20s. And we still do similar shit. That lady was lying. It's not even intentional. And it's like, with, it's, like with us, it's not even intentional. It just happened. Literally. It's bullshit. Me and Dante still do the same damn things. Girl, you could come to me right now. Hold up. Like, like for real. You can come to me right now and be like, all right, mom, look, this girl done pissed me all the way off. I'm the one that's like, let's go. You with me. Come on now. Come on. You know you have. We done did shit together. Okay. <laughs> so, so. Th that that right there, that baby would that baby would not not bath them by herself. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Because if we send each other messages like about yo, this is this not you know for she was the like I'm stuck at the part of the fact that that baby was three years old. Lost her life at the age of three. That baby had a whole life ahead of her. She barely had a, she barely even started a life. Like she, she didn't even start her life. No, but you can even think about me, though. For real. Think about my childhood. I used to get fucking cold clocked for no reason. 
I went through that shit. I literally, from the shit that I've been through, I shouldn't be here right now. You can accidentally hit somebody the wrong way. My, I told you about my doctor mom throwing that urn at my head. Mm -hmm. That big ass, old ass type urn. Like that heavy motherfucking urn. Mm -hmm. I still got the mark to this day, literally right here. I wish I could see her today. I know for a fact I would only need to film money. We're not doing that. We're not. No. You and your father would have to rack up, baby. <laughs> no, you, your father, and butt butt would have to come together. Y'all would have to come together. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. They might even be like, uh, she can't get Belle. Right. Bell denied. <laughs> Bell who? Nah, she 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 she's staying there. Y'all can't come and visit her. Look, the judge would be like, Bell denied. Yeah, We're not accepting nothing for this hoe. <laughs> Yo, we can't can we offer no y'all cannot. <laughs> because she's in critical condition. Exactly. Swear to <laughs> Yo. And it's like, listen, listen, and the worst thing is the fact that I watched Law and Order. That's the, and I feel like that's my problem. I watched Law and Order SVU. So I be peach and I be sick and I be numb. And it's like, I be getting mad watching Law and Order. And the fact that you just. Oh, do you want to know how many years this bitch got? I don't think you really want to. No, because if it's not life, I don't want to hear it. It's not life. If it's not life plus more, I don't want to hear it. It's okay, not. No. No. It's more like 17 years. Alright, this video is over. <laughs> <laughs> like, comment, share, subscribe. <laughs> no, because you said 17 years. For real. Okay, so she got 17 years for killing a three year old. Brain damage, bruises, black eyes. Story, story changes at least like 28 times. No, seriously though, with the injuries this baby had, the whole severe brain bleed, bruises on her shoulders, neck, black ass, small bruises across her chest, various scratches and bru uh, bruises, swelling on the brain, bruise on the left side of her head, and swollen bruise on the back of her head. And oh, the scrape on the chin. 17 years? Oh, did I? 17 years. Was she white? Yeah. That makes more sense. Because if she was black, she would have been like, it would have been like. I'm almost positive that that's, that's, yeah. I'm almost positive that's what it was. For killing like a three-year-old. And it's not even like she just, like, you tortured that three-year-old for eight months. But then, she crazy, the you. other crazy part is, she was only 35 when this happened. So, she got 17 years. But she going to literally... Be coming out of prison. She's really going to get out of prison. She's going to get out of prison and she's still going to be able to live the remainder of pathetic life that she has left while that baby is still in the grave. I didn't want to put the exact charges and stuff into this video because I want to do the interrogation with y'all live so y'all could see what I sent. I wanted to be able to get everybody prepared to come on here and no, we we do this live. 17 fucking years for killing a like, comment, share, subscribe. And don't forget to hit that post. Oh yeah, I really definitely couldn't remember my outro. Alright. <laughs> Alright, like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you're notified every time I drop a new video. And yes, I do and mean... Yes, I mean Every time. Thank you. <laughs> I'll catch you in my next one. Deuces. Deuces.